Despite the recent economic crisis, global GDP is projected to quadruple by 2050 and the population to reach 9 billion. Unless we put in place more ambitious climate policies now, this will lead to 50% more greenhouse gas emissions than today. Without new action, global average temperatures are expected to become between 3 and 6 degrees Celsius higher by 2100 than pre-industrial levels. This will lead to more frequent and more severe extreme weather events, with potentially large impacts on vulnerable populations in particular. In the depths of an economic crisis, it's entirely understandable that governments and businesses, in fact, take a short-term view. The problem with climate change is that that approach ends up being very costly. This is particularly serious when it comes to major long-lived investments, some of the key infrastructure items on which our economy and society depend. And investments that don't take account of the costs of climate change down the track mean that we are hardwiring a fossil fuel dependent future. This requires major shifts of investment towards the right energy, transport, water and building infrastructure and we need to make these shifts on a large scale. Well there's no shortage of capital in this world, that's one thing there's plenty of. Uh, the real issue is where it goes, what's the destination for that uh, investment capital and that's really where governments have an important role to play. To help governments achieve this goal, the OECD has identified the key elements of a policy framework for green investment. It includes five priorities. First, set clear long-term strategic policy goals to ensure meaningful action and predictability for investors. Goals need to be aligned across different levels of government from local to national and developed in consultation with business and community leaders. Second, implement policies and incentives to support low-carbon, climate-resilient investment. Putting a price on carbon and other pollution is an important first step, including removing subsidies to fossil fuel use and production. This will help to make clean energy sources more competitive. Additional regulations will be needed as well, such as energy efficiency standards in buildings or for household appliances. Third, provide the right financial instruments to reduce risk and increase returns from green infrastructure projects. Public funds can be used to help leverage private investments, for example by providing loan guarantees to lower the cost of capital and to increase the availability of financing. International climate finance will also be critical for developing countries. Fourth, harness resources, for example for research and development and build the capacity for action. And fifth, Promote greener consumer and business behavior through education, public awareness campaigns, echo labels, and harmonized standards for greenhouse gas accounting and reporting by firms. Together, these elements of a green investment policy framework can help to mobilize private investment and bring transformational change. This will require consumers, businesses, and of course political leaders from both developed and developing countries to act responsibly for their own sake and that of future generations.